Hello crafters, this is Yanis Makula. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am sharing three ways to do simple embroidery on stitching die cuts. Stitching dies are becoming more and more popular and I feel like they are turning into a trend. And this is a trend I very much enjoy. Now I used to do cross stitch when I was in school, like in elementary school, and I was always fascinated by the beautiful cross stitch magazines and samples. I haven't done any sort of embroidery for a very long time, but this is certainly a hobby I enjoy. And now I'm so happy to see paper crafting and embroidery merge into something utterly unique and beautiful. The stitching die I'm working with today is a stitched high from Spellbinders. Now, Spellbinders has lots of different stitching dies. They keep manufacturing more and more beautiful designs that are very enticing. Now, this particular die has strategically placed holes for stitching a simple floral pattern using a straight stitch. I wanted to step away from that design and embroider my own. I used three types of stitches to create a custom design on this die cut. You can take this idea and apply it to other stitching dies you have in your stash. Now I used six strands of floss for every one of those stitches to create a fuller design. If you'd like to recreate this design, I would recommend going with the six strands as I feel that three strands are just not enough. First, we're going to do a simplified woven rose stitch or woven wheel stitch or another name for it is the wagon wheel stitch. Now, woven wheel stitch is made up of two parts, the spokes and the weaving around them. The spokes are created with the straight stitches and must be an odd number for continuous weaving. So stitch three spokes from the center of the circle out. Typically, you'll need to stitch five spokes or more if you are stitching a larger flower, but the flowers on this die cut are going to be very small and we don't have a lot of room as to how and where to place the spokes, so I suggest going with three. Now, this flower is slightly larger. There are nine holes on the outside, so we can stitch through every third hole, just like this. This makes the base for our flower. To do the weaving, bring your needle up in the center and begin weaving the floss over and under the spokes. So alternate, going over, under, over, under each spoke. Keep the thread slightly loose as you wrap it around the spokes. This will make your flower look a little bit more beautiful. Now continue weaving the floss over and under until the spokes are covered. And remember to keep the thread slightly loose. Now you can weave tightly around the spokes if you want. This will create a thick and dense flower. Or you can weave more loosely, just tight enough to bring the threads in so they touch. The looser weave makes for a much flatter flower, which I think is better for cards. The tight weave creates a thick dimensional flower, which isn't too good if you plan to mail your project. Fluff the finished flower a little bit with your fingers to give it a fuller look. And once you are done weaving, bring the thread to the back and tie it with the other loose end. I also like to add a dot of glue to the knot to make sure it stays put and does not unravel. The other flowers on the stitched H are smaller and they only have eight holes on the outside. So when you stitch the spokes, you can't really place them evenly. One will be unevenly placed, but this still works fine and you can still create your flower. It just won't be as perfectly symmetrical, but really you won't be able to tell. So repeat the process and create your flower on the rest of the die kit. I stitched five roses on the letter H and remember that the first rose was larger and the rest of the roses were slightly smaller. Next, I wanted to add simple leaves to my flowers. And for this, we're going to use another basic stitch called Lazy Daisy or a detached chain stitch. I start by bringing my thread from the back in one of the holes under my rose. 
This way, the leaf will start immediately next to the rose or even a little bit under the rose and will give me a beautiful continuous design. Then I go back through the same opening, but I do not pull my thread all the way back. I create a small loop. Next, I bring the needle back up in one of the open holes, preferably a bit further away from the rose, and I catch my loop with a needle. I make another loop and I bring the needle back through the same hole. This creates a simple fluffy leaf. Now it is slightly different from how you would do this on fabric, but since we are stitching on paper, we have to adapt and I have found that this method works well for creating a little dainty leaves. I continue adding the lazy daisy stitches to create leaves around my roses and I make some leaves lar larger or longer and some leaves shorter depending on where the die cut holes are on my die cut. Now the needle I'm using is a specialty tapestry needle in size 22. Spellbinders has these needles available on their website. The blunt end of this needle doesn't pierce the paper and it also doesn't pull the thread as you stitch, so it is perfect for stitching on paper. I added two to three leaves next to each of my roses, and you can see that that filled up some additional die cut holes on this piece, but I still have some die cut holes left. And to fill those in, I used a third type of basic stitch called a French knot. Now the French knot is very simple, but at the same time, it is a little bit tricky to master. Now the trick is in really understanding how it works instead of just hoping that it will turn out all right. It took me several attempts, I'm not gonna lie, maybe 10 or even 20 before I really understood how the French knot was made. So bring your needle and floss from the back in, pull it tight and create tension. Hold the end of the thread with your other hand. Wrap the needle one to two times around the thread right next to that die cut hole. I'm going to slow down the next part. Use your hand with which you were just holding the die cut to hold the thread. And again, make sure there is tension. Twist and wrap your needle around the thread and go back through the same hole you came up. Keep that tension as you thread the floss through the hole. Tighten the knot and shape it with your fingers. Not bad. Now let's try this one more time. Do not wrap the thread too tight or too loose, but just tight enough to ensure that the eye of the needle passes smoothly through it. It is recommended to wrap the thread no more than twice around the needle. If you want a thicker knot, use more strands of thread instead of more wraps. I did, however, do three wraps for some bigger knots, and I think that la that looked fine on paper. Now, it is recommended not to pass the needle through the same stitch point that you came out from, but near it. Because we're stitching on paper and because we have pre-cut holes, we have to pass back through the same stitch point. If the knot is big enough, it is not going to fall through the paper. I stitched the knots in two different colors of thread to fill any open spaces on my die cut, and I love the result. Now I find stitching to be very relaxing and stitching this die cut was loads of fun as I was able to come up with my own stitched design. If you look on the Spellbinders website, you'll see the other examples of how this die can be stitched using a regular straight stitch. For me, I wanted to try something different and I wanted to incorporate other embroidery stitches and see if I could alter this design. Now, if you look into embroidery, there are loads of different types of stitches and stitching techniques, and many of them can be adapted to these stitching dies. I've been fascinated by embroidery lately. I followed a bunch of embroidery accounts on Instagram and I'm telling you guys, I am so inspired to try some of these simpler stitches when stitching my cards. I stitched the letter I in the same way and I added both onto a dry embossed background created with a Spellbinders Tuft 3D embossing folder. In my previous video, I talked about these new folders and I shared a partial 3D embossing technique that shows how to do this embossed background and at the same time, leave room for a foiled sentiment. 
Now, because stitching is now so popular, you can find specialty thread bundles in the Spellbinders shop. What Spellbinders did is they handpicked floss colors that match the colors of their Color Essentials cardstock. I love their cardstock, and I think that this is genius and very convenient. I love when things coordinate, as this makes creating so easy. I don't have to guess. I don't have to pick and waste time. Spellbinders has done it for me. Spellbinders also has several colors of Distress Oxide inks in their store that coordinate with their cardstock and therefore will coordinate with the floss. I do have the Oxides in my stash, but I'm not really a Distress ink user, so I hardly ever use them. But I just wanted to mention this as I know many of you love Distress ink and you might not know that Spellbinders now has it in their store. Now, as for the cardstock on the website, there is information that will tell you which color thread coordinates with which color cardstock from Spellbinders. I use that information to create custom cardstock spools for my thread. I use the Spellbinders May stamp and coordinating die of the month to die cut the spools from cardstock and then stamp the little number pieces in black ink to be able to write the number of the floss on my spool. Now, this particular stamp and die set is among my favorites as it is very practical. Anything that helps me organize and sort my supplies is highly valued in my craft room as when I'm organized, I'm much more productive. This is not to say that I, I am very organized. I do have a creative mess, but I do try to stay organized and keep my supplies in order. This stamp and die set are now available outside the club subscription, so anyone can purchase it. You do not need to join the club to get these stamps and dies, as it is now already a past club product. I made each spool three layers thick, and this way it was sturdier and able to hold the thread nicely without bending. I wrote the thread number using a pencil on my spool, and then I just wrapped all of that beautiful thread around the paper spool. Now you can get plastic spools for your thread on Amazon, and I do have some white spools for my variegated floss. And the white plastic spools are very inexpensive, but these handmade spools, handmade paper spools, add so much more character to my craft room. I love that they are colorful, and I also love the fact that I made them myself. This makes them much more near and dear to my heart. Here, I wrapped most of the thread from the warm bundle from Spellbinders. Uh, now, I didn't wrap these two colors as I don't have these two coordinating cardstock colors in my stash. So I'm just waiting to get these colors that I'm missing, and then I'll create the coordinating spools, and then I'll wrap this thread around it. So this is all I have for you for today, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Love you and I'll see you next time.